I'm not going to get real deep into WebSphere Application Server because those of you that have used it, you know the server administrates them fairly extensive, and you know there's inside of WebSphere Application and you know that WebSphere Application Server can use a lot of memory. So for those of you that don't understand WebSphere application, like in HTTP applications, and it's a lot more a single HTTP. So by the time we're done here, you should be able to describe the WAS environment and be familiar with WAS Administration Console. So WAS is the name of the product. Um, it's also used to refer to the actual process that runs the application code. Web's your application server runs the application code. So what a server is, a server is really a JVM, a Java virtual machine. So it was, can really, it's got many, many JVMs running, and the JVMs are kind of coming and going depending upon what's also a term called cluster used um, to describe um, a group of servers within the WAS environment. There's also Node. Node describes a single machine that runs one or more servers. There is a term, a term cell. Cell covers the complete WebSphere configuration. And then a daemon is a separate process, and it's a small component, needs little attention. So in the beginning, what IBM did after we ported Unix system set, this goes back to OS, we actually took some HTTP and we ported it. HTTP server code uh, was configured and really behaved Apache form. And what you could do is you could actually go into the Unix files and find the httpd top file. For those of you that are familiar with HTTP server, understand that's your configuration file for the global uh, parameters shaping the behavior. Content is available to it. So a browser could input a URL, go after the HTTP server, and get a response back. And so we had an HTTP server address space many years ago. Now, what we could do, we proved that we could actually have CGI applications talking to the WebSphere application server address space. Most of you know that CGI is easy to write in, but it, it's not really made for high patients. But we proved it would work. So then we made another step. Inside that HTTP server, we have some more code, and we call it the WebSphere Application Server Plugin. This is numerous years ago. And we proved that we could run a servlet inside that WAS plugin and talk to other address spaces like CICS and IMS. And we had what was called the WAS configuration file, WAS.conf, which was a Unix file, uh, to have parameters controlling this WAS plugin. The WAS plugin was in the same address space. And this goes back many years ago when we were developing the environment. So then, another step, we created another address space, which was a J2EE server. It had an EJB container for EJBs. We proved that CICS, uh, many of the other middleware, could talk to this EJB, and the EJB container could talk to the WAS plugin. So we were taking incremental steps to build this environment. So our next step was we found that we could put a web container inside the J2E server with servlets and Java server pages talking to the WAS plugin. And this WAS plugin at, was communicating with the outside world using the HTTP server. So now we're going to take a big jump.
This picture is a little bit hard to read, but this is a cell. I used the word cell earlier to talk about the whole environment. And we have these nodes. And I talked, and I used the word daemon. So what happens to your application server and file deployment manager? And also, you have this location service daemon running. And it's an address space. And it's a controller, but it really is a JVM. And then we're going to be the start, starting a deployment manager, and it also has a controller JVM. But you'll notice that inside the J2EE scalable application server, there actually is HTTP um, transport, HTTP internal in, uh, transport. So the code is embedded inside a WAS. Now, this part here, the controller in the application server, actually is controlling the servant regions right here. The servant regions have the ability to talk to a runtime environment, and it can talk to all these things. So MQ can talk to it, CICS, IMS. This is the Parallel Sysplex Automatic Restart Manager for Recovery in a Parallel Sysplex.